You are more than a conqueror. That word in the Greek is hyper Nike. Did you know that? Every time you see some Nikes, think of hyper Nike. <clears throat> it means Nike's victory. And if you know any, you know, from science, you know you got hypo and hyper, right? Like hypoglycemia, all that stuff, hyper what, hyperventilate, right? Hyper above, right? Hypo below. So you got hyper, you're above, you're more, you're hyper Nike. You are more than a conqueror. You're more than a victor. You're more than victory. I said more than. Okay, come on. Golly. All right. I'm not preaching in Starbucks. They probably shouting better than this. All right. Hey, you know what? You're not, you're not a spectator. You're a participator. Amen? Amen? How many know I can't just reach this whole place on myself? Amen? Amen. The, the, the purpose of the five-fold ministry is to equip the saints, right? So that you can walk in the fullness of what God has for you. That we may be filled with all the fullness of God. That we can walk in sonship. That you can walk just as Jesus walked on earth. You can walk on earth. Praise God. And so the, the job of the fivefold ministry, the, the, the um, apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers, that, those five different ministries that are gifts from Jesus to the body of Christ is to equip the body to walk as sons, right? To walk in that sonship, to walk as Jesus walked on earth, that we would walk in the fullness of the stature of Christ. So that's what our job is to equip, not to do the work, but to equip for the church to do the work. So you're not here as a spectator. You're here as a participator. You're here and we get trained. Amen? Amen. So the, the chief king, which is the, the best government, if you want to know, it's, it's theocracy. It's one in charge. It's kingdom. And there's one. How many know you, there's no democracy with God? He gives the orders and then I release them and we do them. Amen? Amen. So... But we're, we're called to be trained, and you are more than a conqueror. You are a giant slayer. Today, you are chopping off the head of the enemy, and we'll hold it up as a trophy. I don't care what's been bugging you, what's been going on. Today is the day it stops. Enough is enough. You draw the line in the sand, you don't put up with the garbage of the devil anymore. Today, we don't cower back. We run at him, and we take his own sword. We'll chop his head off, and we'll raise it up and shout, and then we'll tell others, and it'll be a testimony, and it'll spread. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You want to know how easy it is? You walk through the word of God. You walk in faith, and as you walk in faith in the word of God, standing in faith, you will triumph over the enemy every single time because this is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Yeah. First John, right? It says this is the victory overcomes the world, our faith. And as you walk in faith in God, you will conquer, you will chop off the head of the enemy, and then what you will do is you will tell others about it. And when you tell them about it, they will receive their freedom. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's, you know, let's turn there. It's 1 John. You can turn your Bibles to 1 John. Because I just like to read it. You know, sometimes I just... Say scriptures, but it's good to show people and know where it's at because you need to get it in you, not just hear it from me, you know, and some people might say things, but you need to know is what I'm preaching from the word of God. Amen? So that we're not ever led astray. So 1 John chapter 5 says, whoever, who's whoever? That's, yeah, all right. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, is born of God. 1 John chapter 5 verse 1. Is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. Talking about the Father and Jesus. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. And we know his commandments. It says in 1 John 3, 23, this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Very simple. That's what it says in 1 John 3, 23. This is, this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Because love is the fulfillment. Love is the fulfillment. So it says, we love God and keep his commandments. So we're walking in love, right? We're walking in love. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God. Now, who's born of God? Let's go back to verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So if you believe Jesus is the Messiah, you are born of God. All right. So for whatever is born of God, say, that's me. Okay. If not, we can fix that real quick. Whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Amen. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I need you as my Savior. I can't do it alone in my works. I can't be righteous enough in my good works. That'll never get me there. I'm in trouble. I will come short every time. But it's through faith, like Abraham believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You believe in what Jesus Christ did and the work that he did on the cross for you, and you'll be saved. Can you say amen? amen. So, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So I'm a whoever, because I believe. I'm a whatever. All right? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So we overcome the world. Say, I overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Not your mom's faith, not your dad's faith, not your brother's faith, not your pastor's faith. Your faith. Amen. Well, how do I get faith? Well, faith comes. It comes by hearing. And to help you a little bit review what we did even last week, and although we got a little bit off, and that's great, because if God takes me off the track, I will go, because he's trying to speak something to some people in here. Amen? So we just go and yield to the Holy Spirit and what he's doing. But um, with that, we talked about um, the laws of faith and how there's natural laws. You remember this? But the law of lift, like a law of gravity. But the law of faith can supersede the natural, right? What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1. Talks about faith is now. Now faith is. Faith is now. Hope is a blueprint. You might be going, well, that, I could see that in the future. That's a hope. Faith is, I take it now. I take it now. Faith is, hope is like the frame or the blueprint Faith is the actual substance. It is the substance of things that are hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen, right? And it goes on to talk about how God created the earth not of nothing. He didn't create the earth from nothing. He created the earth from things not seen. Do you have that next verse, verse 2? He created the earth. Um, you got it? No? Okay, anyway. It goes on to say in verse 2 and 3. It talks about how uh, for by the Lord obtain a good testimony. Thank you. Verse 3. By faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Visible, right? Things which are visible. So you see here that it's, it's not, he didn't make the world of nothing, it's things that aren't vis visible. Faith is an invisible supernatural force that can cause things to manifest from the spirit realm into the natural dimension. How many of those more than one dimension? I mean, if you really get into science, it can blow your mind sometimes. Because they're just trying to catch up with God. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Even Einstein knew there's more dimensions than just the three-dimensional realm. There's way more than the three-dimensional realm. And if you even look, if you start studying uh, the theory of relativity and time and space and the dimension called time-space, it's trippy. I'm not going to get into it now. But it's really cool. It's like, you know, if you travel at the speed of light somewhere and come back, how much time passed for you going at the speed of light versus someone on Earth, it'd be like slow on Earth, like a, a day for that person and like a thousand years for you. Amen. Okay. I know. I can just, you can really think it's crazy. It's amazing. Because when you go fast at the speed of light, time slows down. Anyway, let's just get back to a wrap. Just having fun with you. Because there's laws. But I, I, this is real. The spirit realm is real. And with faith, you can cause things to manifest into the natural realm. And how do you get grace? It is by faith. Romans chapter 4 says it is by, um, it is by grace through faith, right? And so we've looked at that as well. So if, I, if you want grace, how do you get it? Through what? Faith. Not being perfect. It's through faith. Through faith. And God gives grace to the humble. It takes faith to humble yourself before God and not be prideful and say, I can do it all myself. It is, you get this grace by faith. So if you want to walk in grace, you do it by faith. Okay, great. So I need faith to do that. Well, how do I get faith? How do you get faith? Well, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. How do I increase my faith? How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Let's look at Romans chapter 9, and we'll see how faith works. There's a lot of scriptures you can see how faith works, but we're not here for 10 hours today. So we'll do Romans 9 for now. Romans 9, and this is very easy for someone to get saved. You want to help somebody get saved. Romans, or excuse me, not Romans 9, 10. Romans 10. Verse 6, Romans 10, verse 6. It talks about the righteousness of faith. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to being Christ down from above. Or who will descend, and this is, oh God, help me, please. Look, God's given us everything we need. He has given us the victory. Or who will descend into the abyss, 
That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess, say confess. Confess Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, right? That Jesus is Lord. And you believe, say believe. believe. Where do you believe at? In your heart. That God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness when the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you see here that we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. That's how faith works. When you, faith, you can release faith with your words. And faith-filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. Under sin is every bondage. Under death is every ailment. Faith Filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. You're called to be a hyper Nike dominator. We don't don't walk by sight. We don't walk by what we feel. We walk by faith. Faith Faith-filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. Why don't we say it together? Faith-filled words dominate the laws of sin of sin and death. Say it with me. I speak speak words of faith. faith. Amen. So as we speak these words of faith, faith in what? In the word of God. Because the word of God is truth. The who is not truth. The world economic forum is not truth. Political leaders are not truth. The word of God is truth. I believe the word of God no more than what I see or feel. You know, one thing about science And science is great because we have to study what God did. But science has always changed. Medicine has always changed. They used to just bleed people out. I mean, there's all kinds of crazy things. They go, can you believe you did that? Oh, we're the first time in society. We know all of history and science perfectly, and we got it figured out. I mean, come on. It's always been changing. And science is great because God God will give dreams to scientists. He'll, He'll show the guy that had the polio vaccine had a dream about it. God will give, you know, Things, obviously there's some things where you guys, I'm sure, know some of the corruption that can happen, right? But God will give people ideas and all, but science is catching up with God. The word of God is truth, and you can rely on the word of God more than anything. More than what economics are saying, more than what people are saying, more than what the natural is saying. Why? Because you can dominate the natural laws with the laws of faith. But it requires knowing how it works. Because most often when we pray, it's a wish or a hope. In religion. Oh, maybe if I get on my knees and they start bleeding and I, oh, then God will hear me. No, no. Faith is what moves things. Faith is what moves God. Faith. And so sometimes it's, oh, I hope it's my last resort. Maybe he can do something. Look, and out of his mercy, God will help people at times. But really, he wants you to grow up in faith to where we can walk in dominating over what we see and feel. And that's what we're called to do. And, and, and in this last hour, it's needed because I really believe if you want provision to walk and live this life in victory <laughs> with what's going on, we're going to have to live the life of faith, period. So you see this and it says, for the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. I'm in Romans chapter one, or nine, or bleh, 10 still, verse 11. We're just moving on to the next verse. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here's how you're going to see how faith comes. Are you ready? How then shall they call on him in whom they haven't not believed? So they haven't believed. How can they even know, right? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? So they haven't heard. They need to hear. How can I believe in faith for healing? How can I believe in faith for finances? How can I believe in all my sins being forgiven? How can I believe this? You have to hear it. How shall they hear without a preacher? So God calls preachers to preach the word. How shall they preach unless they are sent, as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. That means good news of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. The word of God and the gospel is good news. You know it says glad tidings? You know why it says glad tidings? Because the gospel is good news, not bad news. You know, sometimes people can get really messed up because religion will screw things up big time. Oh, that person died early. Listen, oh, that was God's will. He wanted them just to end their life for this and that. No, he didn't. 
Not everything that happens in this world was God's plan. His plan was to give Adam dominion. He gave us dominion. And with that comes a freedom and an authority with responsibility. When God gives you authority, he gives responsibility. So when God gives me head as my household, if I do something against what he wants to do in my house, that's not his fault. He gave me dominion and he gave me authority, but I will be held accountable. There is a day I'll be held accountable and it's a scary thing. And so I need to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. Saying, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. So God gives authority on earth. And when Jesus came and conquered and said, believe, that is your victory. He will say, what will he say to you at the end? He'll say, great job. You believed. Or he'll say, where is your faith? How come you have no faith? Oh, you have little faith. But we can go from little faith to great faith. You can be of little faith like the disciples were at one point. To of great faith, like the centurion just said, you just, all I need is you just speak the word. That it's, you just speak it. And when he spoke the word, the centurion said, that's enough. I believe. I don't need you to go even go. I don't need to see the manifestation. I don't need to see my servant healed. I don't need to see that you're going to go and touch him. All I got is the word, and that's enough for me because I walk in great faith. And I'm celebrating on my way before I even see the result because I walk in faith and faith celebrates before. That's great faith. And you are called to walk in great faith. Now, you, could, you might feel I've been in little faith, like the disciples, where they're in the boat and they're scared. And they said, do you even care what's happening? God, oh, help. And he rebuked the storm, but he's like, you have little faith. Like, you all should be rebuking the storm. You have little faith because they were scared. And, and the opposite of faith is fear. And so, and so he, he's talking to them. But you know what? You got Peter. And all the disciples fled and forsook Jesus. They were scared. Peter was, I don't know him. I don't know him. Three times, I don't know Jesus. He goes from, I don't know Jesus, to standing up, and preaching and saying, Jesus Christ, whom you crucified to the mob. And they get saved. The ones that say crucify him. Jesus goes from being scared to being in boldness of great faith. Or not Jesus, Peter. And Peter's up there and he's saying, Jesus Christ, whom you all crucified. He's not scared anymore. He's filled the power of the Holy Spirit from Acts 1. Filled with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues. And then he goes, he says, they're not drunk. And he begins to preach. And these people get saved. And no one's beyond being saved. You might know somebody that you, whatever. These people said crucify him. And Jesus died for the one saying crucify him. So if someone's been awful to you and they're saying crucify you, love them. Because Jesus died for those saying crucify him. And they got saved. Praise God. So there's no one ever beyond hope. And you might feel like the devil's been telling you, I don't have victory and I, I just been messing up this and that. Look, you're here. That's a pretty big step. You're here. You're doing something right. Consistency is the key. You keep showing up. You, can, you want to be a great, in great shape? Consistency. Consistency. It's not the guy that shows up on January 1st and does three hours. And the one guy has been doing it all year that shows up for his normal hour routine or half hour, whatever he's doing. It doesn't mean, even if it's a half hour, he's consistent. He'll do way more. That one guy shows up for three hours and never comes back. It's about consistency, faithfulness. That's what you'll see your breakthrough. And, I, you know, I went to the beach this last week, and we were there, and it was cloudy, and it was overcast, and it was, it was gloomy. And we're sitting there, and usually when the overcast layer breaks the, at, the, at the beach, you see it start fizzling. And you go, oh, good, it's coming through. Well, it started fizzling like at noon, and then it, like, closed back up. And it was overcast. And it just stayed gloomy. And usually you see it fizzle, and it's going to break through, and you're like, oh, okay, and you're glad. Well, we're sitting there, and it's, it's, it's been like that for a while. So it was like, I don't know, later in the afternoon, and we decide we're packing up and going. The moment we get to the car, which we were right there at the beach, I mean, I looked around and said, what the heck just happened? I've been freezing out here, just freezing, and I don't want to go in the water. And now I'm sweating, carrying stuff to the car, because all of a sudden, it was a slow break off. It was like it went from, I don't even know how it happened. It was like we turned around, it was overcast. I turned around, and there's, I'm like, did you guys see what I saw, or am I tripping? It's like, no, no, no. It was gloomy every day. I mean, you look out into the ocean for miles. It looked gloomy. And it wasn't like it broke off. It was just like, it was like a video game glitch. Like, I turned around, it was just gone. I'm like, what in the world? And I want to prophesy to you, some of you may feel like it's been gloomy. And it's been gloomy. And you've been sitting there. And you want to ditch out early. And you want to pack up early. Don't pack it in. Because you're going to look. And in a moment's notice, you're not going to see the slow fizzle off. You're going to go from gloomy and dark and nothing to in a moment, just like that, in one day, it's going to go to sunny. And so I feel like there's people, you've been discouraged, you've been frustrated, and there's been stuff going on even this past week. But look, keep your post. 
Keep your post. You've been getting thoughts. Go, run, this and that. Keep your post. Stand your guard. Where God tells you to go, stay there. What God has spoken to you in the spirit, don't, don't doubt in the flesh. Don't, go, don't, the devil will try and debate in the natural mind all the time. When you are worshiping and you got that word from God in service or he spoke to you, hang on to that word. Fight the good fight of faith. It's not the fight of the natural. It's not the mind of the logical. You fight the good fight of faith in the word of God and that rhema word. What's rhema? It's that spoken word that God has spoken to you in a moment. And when God spoke to you, do not let go. It can be very easy to go back and go, oh, I, I just my mind. Look, you know, trust when you're worshiping God and when you're seeking him or you're in church, he's speaking to you more than when you're sitting there watching Seinfeld eating a donut. <laughs> That's older, isn't it? God will speak to your word and he wants us to hang on to it and walk in faith. And I'm telling you, that breakthrough is coming like that. Think of Joseph. He didn't know the next day. In one day, he didn't go from the, he didn't go from the prison, right? Well, he was ruling the prison, but he didn't go from the prison to like, oh, up here to maybe servant in the king's palace or a guard outside the door. He went from the bottom to the right hand. Amen. One day, one day, one day. My, you know, it's one day, boom. Like my dad preached that sermon just a few weeks ago. This time, tomorrow. And you can stand strong in faith because it's coming. And faith comes when the word of God is preached. Let me keep reading in Romans chapter 10. So the believer preaches this good news. And it is good news. The gospel is good news. And like I said, some people messed it up and said, things that aren't God's will are his will. And it's not true. You want to find out the will of God? Get in the word of God, and you'll find out the will of God. And then you act like the word of God is true. You want to walk in faith? Just act like God's word is true. Just act like it. What do I do about it? I'm going to act like the word's true. He said, I'll meet my needs. What is it? I'm going to act like the word's true. I'm going to act like the word's true. How about we just say that? I act like the word of God is true. Oh, you know, you know, we're not supposed to stress or be worried. We're just live a life of faith. So when faith, so it says, so then faith, um, but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Not heard 10 years ago, oh, I know that. No, faith, it can, it's continually. You need to keep filling yourself with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. How often are we hearing the word of God? You want to strengthen your faith? Hear the word of God. And you hear the word of God for the area that you're believing for. If you need faith for finances, you believe and you hear the word of God for his provision for you. If you want to believe God for healing, then you listen to teachings. And you, or you, if you can't find any, then you grab the word of God yourself and you start saying them. And faith will come. And your faith will fill up. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Now, what is this saying? Well, almost seven years ago, I didn't know. But I operate in faith with it. It says that we believe, and therefore we speak. And I said, Lord, I don't know what this means, but I ask you what it means. And I thank you that you've already showed me. Even though in the natural, I've not had any revelation. But I thanked him and praised him for it. And I had a very uh, neat experience I'd never experienced in my life. Um, I couldn't see him with my natural eye, but Jesus walked into my bedroom that night when I was sleeping. And let me tell you what he talked about this verse. I didn't even know this stuff could happen, but I'm just, I'm just sharing you. I'm a witness to you what I've seen and heard. And I will tell you, Jesus, can, he, he, you know, he stood by Paul and said, I have many people in this city. There's many times he appeared to people in scripture. And he, people will still, and don't, don't, when you have dreams from the Lord and he, or he appears to you in the dream, don't ever write it off. It's just a dream. Study the scriptures. Constantly in scripture. Abraham, God made a covenant with him. He was in, he, deep sleep fell on him. When God went to Solomon and said, 
What do you want? And God visited him. It says, behold, it was a dream. So anyway, I go to sleep and I have a dream that night. I go to sleep and I see a tornado coming at me. And some of you may have heard this, but I'll feel to share it again. And the tornado's coming at me. And you had a dream that feels so real. Like you wake up and you're like, oh, man. So I'm dreaming and this tornado's coming at me. I'm freaked out that I'm going to die. I, I don't want to die. A tornado, wouldn't that be scary? Imagine a tornado coming at you. But I knew that we have authority over this because of Jesus. So in, this, in my dream, I'm saying, I command that tornado to stop. I command you to stop. I have authority in the name of Jesus, the word of God. I've been given authority and dominion. I command, you have to stop. You have to go away. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking this tornado. And I spoke to it. You want to know what happened? It got closer. It got closer. Now, I was doing this, but honestly, I was still a little scared inside. I was still a little scared inside because I'm like, this is so real to me, guys. Like, I don't want to die. You know, I'm like, I command you. But I'm saying it, but I'm like inside a little, I'm like a little scared still. But it's still, and it's coming. And it got closer. I said, I command it. You got to go. You got to go. And I keep speaking it. I keep speaking it. I keep speaking it. And the trainer gets really close. And I don't know if it was a devil or an evil spirit, but he stood in front of me. And he said, you can't bind me up. You can't bind me up. And I said, yes, I can. In the name of Jesus, I command you to leave. And boom, he's gone, and the tornado's gone. And I woke up. And that is when Jesus walked, was in my room next to my bed. And you're like, what? This sounds, I'm just telling you, I didn't know this could happen. But I'm like, he's like standing there. You're like, what do you mean? Like, I couldn't see my natural eye. But I knew he was there more than I know my wife sitting here on the seat. I'm telling you, he was, I can tell you right where he's standing. To the left of my bed, right there. I could feel him from head to toe where he was and what he was saying to me. And he began to teach me from the dream because I had thanked him for showing me what that verse meant. I'm just so thankful. I don't even know. He's just so good. He's so good. Sometimes it's as simple as asking. We just don't ask. And so I said, he said to me, he starts teaching me of the dream. He said, you know, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you've thrown out the part hearing. I'm like, ooh, how does he know that? Oh, yeah, he's God. Okay. Actually, the first thing that happened was he started talking to me, and I freaked out and was like, do I need to get my phone to write this down? And he's like, no, I'm going to store this in your heart. And he said, you threw out the hearing part. You thought faith just comes with the word of God, so you've just been reading and reading only. But faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. I said, okay. And he said, what happened was when that tornado came, you, your faith was not fully there for it to manifest. You had some fear. Because remember, fear and faith are opposites. And I didn't fully believe. Now, I wasn't fully persuaded. I didn't know. And he said what happened was, you spoke my word. It came back in your ear. And faith came by hearing and hearing that word of God. And then 2 Corinthians 4.13 happened. You believed. So therefore... You spoke. Then I spoke it again. You have to go. Then it came back in. I have authority. And faith rose. He didn't call it this, but I call it the faith cycle. And faith came more. So then as a result, I believed, and therefore I spoke. And I kept speaking. And I kept speaking. And I kept decreeing. And I kept hearing. And faith kept rising. And faith kept rising. Although he said to me, you know, in the beginning, you notice you, you were scared a little bit? You didn't fully believe. But then it came, and it reached the point to where I was no longer like this, like this, or this. I was here, and I was full of faith. And now because I was full of faith in this area, it had to change the manifestation of what I was seeing. And that's why it left. And he also taught me, I'll share this, I haven't really taught much, but taught or shared this much, but he showed me in Luke 17 about when you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say. And he also showed me how it says, when someone serves, they don't make it a big deal. So I'm just doing my duty. He said, you made that tornado leave. Don't become prideful about it. You're just doing what I've called you to do. It's just, it's just what we're, we're meant to do, right? You're just doing your duty. So you don't get prideful about it, and you don't go, oh, well, you're just doing what you're called to do. And so we talked about that, and um, I was really excited. <laughs> but I learned more about faith and how it works. And so you can have faith as small as a mustard seed and say, and watch a mulberry tree be uprooted. You can say, 
you can have faith. And so what happens is, is you hear and you believe it comes in, it comes out of your mouth and it'll change your situation. But he also showed me, he said, in the same way, people go in the negative realm. And the doctor said this, I believe it. I have this long to live. I have this long to live. I have this long to live. Whatever it is. Or my kid will always run from me. My kid will always be, or this will always be, or I never have enough. I can't afford. Whatever it is. It's really, remember, fear is faith in what the devil can bring about. And you can actually start a cycle in the wrong way. And if you have, it's okay. We can change it and turn it around. Because if you turn around in your heart and in your mouth, you can turn it around. So you find the word of God where you've been speaking wrongly and you substitute the word of God and you'll see the rudder, which is your tongue from James 3, your ship will begin to turn. Because if you change your rudder, you will change your direction and destination. And some of us, we've been in the wrong destiny or the wrong place away from the destiny God has for you, the wrong direction, because your rudder has been pointing you in the direction God does not have you to go. But as you start speaking the word of God, your rudder will align with his will and you'll get in the right place. And instead of your sailboat going against the wind of the spirit of God, you'll be going in the right direction and his breath, his spirit will blow upon your ship on your, on your life and you will move in the right direction being propelled. Sometimes we're rowing so hard because our rudder has put us against God's spirit. And we need to spin the ship around and go the direction he wants us to go and speak in line with his word and watch what ease we'll move with. Amen. Praise God. This is how we walk in victory. But you understand, there's, there's, a, there's a knowing. We know that God said, my people perish for lack of what? Knowledge. What you're getting today is a few things. You're getting faith coming to you because the word's being spoken, but you're also getting knowledge of how to operate in faith, how to turn your situation around. And sometimes it starts with just simply, what am I hearing and what am I saying? Because believing will follow. It's very simple. You want, to, you want to get a whole nation to believe something? Just put it on the news. All day. Did you hear the news said? 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 Oh, our world's going to crud. <laughs> then your life's going to go to crud. Shut off the news and put on the word of God. You want victory? Then use the, 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 this is a recipe of victory. The news wants to put fear in you. Fear stops today. The word of God, you know, I've heard in this, maybe you've heard some of this stupid stuff. Sometimes even people who speak, they're representing God. I heard that someone recently from a Christian school, like a university for seminary, was telling people that fear is what we're supposed, it's okay and normal. No, it's not. It's not normal. Now you may have fighting it might have been a common thing, but that doesn't mean you have to live with it. That's what I mean. I'm not saying if you fought it, it's not normal because we've probably fought fear and anxiety at different times. But it is not normal to say this is my lot in life and I'm, I'm supposed to be a, not a hyper Nike but a hooper loser. Whatever, hypo loser. No, you're not a hypo loser. You're a hyper Nike. Amen. Well, how can you say that? Because God commanded me in Philippians 4. He said, be anxious for nothing. That word anxious is stressed. Fear, it's all the same thing. If you're stressed out, it's a way of saying I'm scared God's not going to provide in this situation. Stress, anxiety, fear is not your lot in life. Your lot in life is a stress-free life, the trusting life, the faith life. And as you get rid of, well, how can I do it? First of all, it says, Philippians 4, it says, be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, verse 6, right? For nothing, but my situation, for nothing. But everything with, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, before I see the answer, right? So I'm anxious for nothing. I'm fearful for nothing. I'm stressed out for nothing. But everything, or th uh, through everything with uh, supplication and thanksgiving, with our requests, we know made our requests made known to God. And you have a promise when you do that and you choose not to be anxious. The peace of God, there it is. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. It's beyond your nat natural mind's comprehension. It will actually guard, this peace will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus when you trust him and choose not to be anxious. You mean he can give me a command? Yeah, and when he gives you command, he also empowers you to obey it. Just ask him for help. He'll help you. Joshua chapter 1 even said, and many of you have quoted this, have I not commanded you? What is God commanding? Be strong, right? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. 
Do not be afraid. It's a command. When I'm choosing fear, I'm disobeying God. Today, the head of fear is cut off in your life. Amen. Cut that stupid turd's head off and wave it as a trophy. Amen. Enough. And if you've been living in stress and anxiety, I know you've been dealing with depression. Because Proverbs 12, 25 says that an anxious heart causes depression. And if we live stressed enough, we'll begin to feel down. And if you feel down enough, then the enemy will start speaking lies to you and say, your life's not worth it. But he won't say you. He'll say, my life's not worth it. Nobody likes me. Those are lies. How do you combat, combat lies? With truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What you're hearing this morning is not my words. This is the words of the living God. And his truth, his word will set you free. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The word of God is true. We can act like it's true. And he'll come through every single time. Well, I want to give you one illustration. I don't know if I, well, we're just going to do it. Here we go. We're going to look at 1 Samuel real quick. Because you're going to see faith in action. You ready to see faith in action? Okay. I asked people, how did David kill Goliath? You know what? Yeah, we got time. I know you seem to look at the clock. We're good. And I'll tell you one thing. If I can stay for overtime for a stupid football game where they don't give a crud about me and I paint my car their colors, my face their colors, and they could care less than leave your town in a heartbeat, I can stay two minutes for God. I'm, I'm, enough, I'm done with the half-in church. I'm done. I'm done. Half-in church, forget you. Get on board and get on fire. You know what? This is the words of God because he said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. It's time that we're not spectators. We live for the living God. We don't just say, oh, I go to church with my good. No, God is my life. He is my refuge. I'm nothing without him. He's our everything. I'm all in. I'm not part-time God. I'm all-time God. Amen? It can be wherever you're at. Praise God. Here we go. Well, you know, I might, I might not get that happy hour. I don't care. I might not get my discount. It ends at the, look, we're here for the Lord. I'm all in. You know, if you're at a, at a stupid Laker game and that game goes in overtime, you're not leaving those seats. Well, actually, my dad and Uncle Bill are watching from Ohio. Everybody say hi. He's in Ohio. And I got a, we went to the Rose Bowl to Ohio State, Arizona State. One, on, my, on my NCAA football, when I played on Xbox, it was one of the top classic games ever. I'm getting off track. But they're watching. Everybody say hi to Pastor Fred. He's with his brother and Uncle Bill. Probably I don't know if they're watching together. But these guys took me to the Rose Bowl. I'm so thankful. But in the fourth quarter, when it was one of the greatest comebacks in history, we left early because we were doing the progressive commercial and skipping the parking. <laughs> Listening to it on the radio. That's all right. <laughs> they're in there laughing. I guarantee you he's watching right now. Maybe. Or, or it's really quiet in the room. Okay. So you ready for David real quick? David goes, and there's this, there's this Philistine mocking. There's this Philistine doing all these things. I'm going to close this story. There's this Philistine mocking, and he's saying all these things, and he's saying, and he's saying, and he's saying. He's saying. And they're scared. They're fearful. There, is, is there not? And David goes, is there not a cause? Amen. That word is actually the word word in the Hebrew. Is there not a word? Yeah. Is there not something I can stand on? Yeah. And David's there, and David God had trained him to defeat the lion and the bear, and he was ready. And God will start you with small things and lead you up because you are destined to be a giant slayer and cut the head off of giants. That's, your, that's what you're called to do. It'll be your bread. Like Caleb said, give me that mountain. Those giants, that'll be my bread for food. Amen. When you see a giant, you just, mm. You know, when, I, when we coach football, I, 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 I coach and I played in the spread offense. And really good. My, my office coordinator is the head coach at Texas Christian right now. And our thing is, if a team blitzes, that's when we score. When they attack, we make them pay. I, I remember coaching here, and a, a guy blitzes middle backer all the time, didn't cover running back. I just ran swings for touchdowns all day. It's like, you want to attack me? I'm not just going to go, oh, no, because quarterbacks like to get scared when they get blitzed. No, no, no. You blitz, that's my opportunity for a touchdown. The enemy comes at you, you say, great, now I'm going to take your head and wave it to everybody. That's what you do when the enemy comes at you. The enemy says, oh, you know, you shouldn't forgive that person. Do you remember what they did? Do you remember what they did? You say, you keep your mouth going. I'm going to send them some money. <laughs> you make him pay. You make him pay. When he tries to come at you, you make him pay. Those suckers. Jesus won the victory. You make them pay. He won it. Don't you give the devil the victory when Jesus already paid it. Amen? 
Stand strong in the word. I'm closing. So, and so Saul said, said, there's so much saying. I put boxes around everywhere I see the word said in, in 1 Samuel 17. There's so much in here. I could do a whole sermon, but we're not doing it today. I'll just tell you this. David, he said, he, he said, you are not able to go against a Philistine to fight with him. For you're a youth and he a man of war from his youth. People will say stuff to you. Maybe he gets you scared. And David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion, a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he's defied the armies of the living God. David didn't kill Goliath with a rock. He killed Goliath with his faith. He believed and he spoke. Over and over, he says, in verse 37, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul says, go, and the Lord be with you. He changes tune really quick. <laughs> Amen. All right. So he takes a stab and he goes on. Then verse 43, the Philistine said, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said, come to me and I'll give you flesh. And he's, and he's talking trash to him, right? Then David is a pretty good trash talker of faith. David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. It's already won. It's already won. Now, David didn't go out there going. No, what does it say in the very next verse? It says that David hurried and ran toward the army to, re, to, to uh, meet the Philistine. And by the way, he didn't say carcass. He said carcasses because he's going to chop. He didn't have a sword on him. I'm going to chop your head off. No sword on him. He believed it. He spoke it. He did it. Exactly what he spoke and believed. Because he saw the battle is not him versus Goliath. He saw the battle is my God versus your God. Who the heck do you think you are, you moron? How could you talk like that? How could you say cut your head off and give your carcass to the birds of the air? Because sometimes you got to talk back and tell him to shut up. Give him the word of God right in his face. You know no one loves you. You know, Shut up, devil. Jesus died for me with his blood, you idiot. Sorry, I'm, I'm just being a little rough, I guess. I just, I, you know, when it's wartime, I ain't messing around. I just get a little real. I can talk, thou is be quiet to you. Is that better? <laughs> I'm just, I, I give it to you how I do it because I don't mess around with him. I ain't playing games. And you're not either, amen? Okay. So he talks, and what does David do? He goes there. And it says in verse 51 that David ran and stood over the Philistine, took the sword and drew it out of its sheath. This is after he took the stone, right? Hit him in the head. Well, I'll start in 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine, verse 50, with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him, but there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Today we're chopping heads off. Today you say enough is enough. And I pray that like I spoke last week that you start getting the word more. That again you continue consistently in the word. God, what is my rhema in this season? What are you speaking to me? If you need help, grab Google and say, I need a scripture on this. And start searching. You can find out what you want to know. Amen.